So, we're going to pass these out in a second. This is called an alphabet communication board, and this allows the patient to spell, spell out words to answer the questions or if they want to tell you something. So, as you can see here, it has the vowels on this side and the other letters over here. So, you want to start over here. So, uh, you would first say A and then wait if it was a yes or a no. So if it was a no, you would not go down this row, you would go to the next one until they um, said which row that they were ready for and then you would go across. So if I say A, Sammy tells me no, E, I, O, P, Q, R, and um, some really good tips with this is you want to make sure you're saying the words loud enough. You also want to give them enough time to respond instead of quickly going through the letters. You also um, want to make sure as you're spelling a word, if she was going to spell the word run, I would say R. And then if she did U, I would say R, U. And if I, within context, figured that it was the word run, it's okay to say run to keep the, to keep the conversation going. And you can say yes or no. So if it was no, then I would just keep um, eliciting this and seeing what the next letter was. Yep. And it's amazing how fast they can go. I had one client who had done it with his dad for a long time. I mean, they were doing A E I O U, I mean, very fast. It was incredible. So it's yeah. definitely a practice. Do you ever try seeing if they can write first before going to this? Yeah. I feel like that's yeah. kind Absolutely. Of that would be, yeah. this is more for like patients who are like limited. Or um, more fatigued clients who are going to get fatigued and getting messages. There's also positioning is one um, where it could be really awkward um, in some cases. And in others, you may just do this because you have a couple of quick questions that you may want to run by somebody. Or you have a list of items that you might want to run down um, with the person. Um, also, you may or may not do this. The, the board's nice because you can make it pretty big. Um, whereas if if somebody's having a little trouble seeing, um, a lot of times their hand right now can be illegible. But um, we use those, we use a boogie board or a magic slate a lot in those cases because you can just quickly um, write things on them and then clear them really quickly. So, yeah, um, that's a good place to start. And also, Tyler was talking about aphasia, which is an acquired neurological condition, and sometimes people have trouble coming up with the word that they're trying to say. And that auditory prompt can be a good cue for some people, whereas sometimes when they write, they may have a disconnect between you know, their brain and their muscles. So there's also those kind of things you need to keep into consideration. Okay. So, sir, just my last thing on this technique is that um, if you've got somebody who's pretty reliable um, and you're feeling like you read the intention pretty quickly, you can just go with a yes once you've established it. But on a high stakes item, it's important that they tell you yes or no. Um, so when you're moving through scanning and you got somebody who's pretty quick, it's okay to just go with the yes yeah. and move it there. Like that but case I was talking like, about. You know, something really critical about their care, you'd want them to say yes or no so that you're certain about their answer um, in those cases. So that's where it's good to have a yes and a no response. But in something like scanning, um, it starts to really slow people down and get pretty fatiguing to always be saying no. This also shows just the importance of seeing if your patient has any way of being able to communicate to you even the very simple ways instead of just assuming that they cannot because you really want to make sure they have a say in their care.
that's a long journey to say don't interrupt anything, but I was just curious if that's how it has to go. Or can they be like, I think that there are some cases where you can make a button here that's like for a picture uh -huh. and then you go through the pictures or it, maybe if you try going down you know and they haven't done anything then you can go uh -huh. but it, it depends I mean these boards are really individualized have you seen anything like that so it'd be two things in this case um, don't interrupt is in the U row yeah so I mean, you would have to wait till they get down to you, and then you'd have to go over. Um, but usually when people use that particular symbol, it's that they want you to stop guessing at what they're saying. So it's not quite as much. Some people don't like it because people always guess wrong. So for example, with Noah, I can guess because I know him pretty well, but I've heard him tell other people not to guess because he, he wants to say it, and he doesn't want to be interrupted with you guessing what he's trying to say. And so, in the case of like, hey, don't interrupt because I'm doing this, usually it's not so bad. Like once people buy into this strategy, they just sort of wait for it to go. The thing you want to clear up is, hey, is it okay for me to guess what I think you're going to say? Okay. Because some people have really strong preferences to say no, because you're going to get it wrong. I'll tell you when I'm done. Okay, that's so, insightful. Yeah. Okay. I usually ask people. subtle signals like an eye blank or something like that and the, the most common error with this is people are looking at the board and scanning down yeah. and they forget to check back with the other person so they've missed their signal they've already gone on to the next letter and as you can see if you wanted to say B and I'm already at C D yes maybe no <laughs> I've already gone way past your choice and that's when people get frustrated it's mm -hmm. actually more on the partner end where they yeah. um, where they don't like that as much there's a nice um, autobiography. They made a movie of it. Um, it's called The Diving Bell and the Butterfly. If you've ever seen this film, it's a good one. Um, but he, um, this is Jean Dominique Bobé, and he wrote um, a book about it. He used this technique. Um, and that's one of the things that he talks about was um, people who used this technique really well, he was always really relieved because they could talk so quickly. It's actually analogous to somebody that you know really well. It's very easy to talk to them. If you've ever, this weekend that was somewhere else, and I had somebody that was it was so painful to talk to this person because you know we were nothing in common and we had different values and they would say things and we sort of you know, kind of let go. Um, and it was a very difficult conversation just to have right with this person. So I think it feels like that, like I don't know, it's this person. That's my sense. We have good feedback also from people um, who've had the um, Guillaume Boré syndrome. So they've had to use this technique, but only temporarily. And then we talk to them afterwards and say, hey, so what did you like, what did you not like? And this is one of those things, too, where um, like this technique was very challenging. But when people were good at it, they were really good. Like with Noah, he has the laser. So in order Yeah, and that's 
it's like something so like something like analyst where it's kind of a progressive thing they'll start with the laser pointer but as they lose motor ability they might go to a another um, technique so one thing about the laser pointer um, if you put a laser pointer that's always on on somebody's head and then they go to talk to you um, <laughs> yeah, they yeah, can yeah. find you so actually a colleague of mine developed a, a safe laser technology so it only works when it's pointed at the board and then oh. it turns off immediately The challenge with it, right, is the laser pointers are so cheap um, that it's hard to get a price point on a safe laser that, that's acceptable with, yeah. you know, the amount of times that they actually use it. So you generally get people who buy the safe laser because they have an ongoing need for it, um, but it's hard. Uh, I haven't seen them get a good hospital buy-in for it, for example, because it's, it's a little yeah. more expensive. And you can do this for free. Yeah, also... Um, it still requires, um, you know, a little bit of ability. Um, even now, the system uh, is tricky. Yeah. So, um, but I think for a long-term solution for a patient, or that's the best. I was I was gonna say the client that I had, um, he had an infection that um, made him paralyzed at his vertebrae up at the top. It's like C3 or something, and he had an eye gaze where he didn't have to have a head tracker like Noah and it followed his eyes, but it was really difficult for him, especially if he would get into a, like a position and it would move a little bit and he would have to constantly, you know, um, put things back into um, different formulas to get the eye tracker going in the right area. And he really liked the output board because like Dr. McCarthy was saying, it, he was with his dad and it was really fast. And he, when he got his eye tracker, they put an alphabet board on his device mm -hmm. so he also was very familiar with the technique so it's something that never changes like our updates you know on our macs or our phones yeah they do have retinal scanning options too for, um, for different devices so they just where you where you would look at with the scan so um my patient and I'm asking her what she would like to drink. So Nicole, what would you like to drink? <laughs> A E I O U U V W. Okay. That's not my chalk. Yeah. W. <laughs> A. A. W. A.